This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. If you want to ride a fast train in the United States right now, your best option is the Acela Corridor in the Northeast that runs between Washington, D.C. and Boston, with stops in Philadelphia and New York. It's a route that makes absolute sense. Several massive cities all within close proximity, making train travel competitive with cars and planes. But there's another region of the country with very similar advantages. It's the Texas Triangle, made up of the 4th, 5th, 24th, and 28th largest metro areas in the U.S. Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, and Austin. They all exist in one of the flattest parts of the U.S. If the Texas Triangle were in China or Japan, you would be able to get between these cities in a web of high-speed rail right now. But we're in Texas. There is some rail service between the cities of the Texas Triangle. The Texas Eagle connects Dallas and Fort Worth to Austin and San Antonio with once daily service. And you can catch an Amtrak Sunset Limited train from San Antonio to Houston, but it only operates three days per week at a maximum speed of 79 miles per hour. It truly is limited. This is disappointing when compared to rail service in places like California, let alone places like Japan and Europe. I'm not the only one to notice that Texas seems ready-made for high-speed rail. There has long been a proposal for a Texas T-Bone network that connects cities via two major routes that intersect in the city of Temple. Other proposals literally draw a triangle. And one high-speed rail proposal is rapidly approaching the construction phase. Texas Central is a private rail company that plans to connect Dallas and Houston, the two largest cities in the triangle, with a train that could connect the two, plus one additional stop, in 90 minutes. They're planning on using the same train technology that runs the Japanese Shinkansen. Texas Central will be the second privately built rail service in the United States after the Bright Line in Florida. That service connects Miami to West Palm Beach with an extension to Orlando under construction. But laying the rails and running the trains is really only half of a successful high-speed rail line. We need to talk about stations. How will people get here? What are around the stations? And will people need a car when they arrive? The answer to these questions comes from station area planning. Will Texas's station plans make for a successful high-speed rail network? Let's talk about that after the bike bell. In many cities outside the United States, there's no real concern about what's around a train station. They're already located in central cities with hotels, restaurants, businesses, and other attractions within walking distance. They're also major transportation hubs, making it easy for travelers to hop off their high-speed rail and get on a bus, tram, or commuter rail to destinations outside of walking distance. This is one of the primary advantages of traveling by rail. No long drive out to the airport, security lines, and extensive boarding processes. You just hop on a tram to the station, board your train, and off you go. That said, you can probably see the problem with where I am now. This is Austin's passenger rail station. There's a YMCA and a park over here, a busy road over there, and we're pretty close to downtown Austin. It's not in the middle of nowhere by any means, but a Texas Eagle passenger train arriving here will not be emerging from a grand station in the center of a bustling city like in Europe. So let's take a look at the four major metro areas of the Texas Triangle and see what it would take to get these station areas to a point where people could have a more seamless, car-free experience. And let's start here in Austin. Here's a look at the map. It's not dead central in Austin, like a Grand Central Station, but it is downtown or downtown adjacent in an area that seems to be growing quickly. Location is critical to any successful rail station, and downtown rail stations have the benefit of being centrally located and surrounded by pedestrian-friendly land use patterns and transportation networks. There are likely many hotels and restaurants nearby, perfect for travelers. And districts with bars, restaurants, and hotels tend to be 24-hour neighborhoods, ones that are lively all the time. This is useful for when trains arrive late. Travelers can still get a meal and check into a hotel safely. If a rail station isn't smack dab in the middle of downtown, having some nearby areas for new development can help, and Austin Station has this. Those areas can be redeveloped into a future 24-hour neighborhood. Here in Austin, there may be a better place for that adjacent YMCA, and that could free up some land for a hotel or other transportation supportive uses. And some of the parkland nearby could be converted as well. Though I'm not advocating for buildings up against the river, that trail and park system is a gem and should not be touched. The final thing a successful station area needs is connections to other transit. Not everyone will be staying at the hotel next to the station. None of this new transit will be located anywhere near this station. The closest stop will be about 15 minutes walk that way. Now, part of this is because Austin's high-speed rail plans are well into the future, but this doesn't bode well for making this station a hub for local transportation. So the final verdict for Austin is mixed. The location has some promise, but long-term transportation plans ignored entirely. If high-speed rail to Austin became a reality, these plans could change, but it doesn't bode well. But what about the two cities that are getting high-speed rail, Houston and Dallas? 
Surely their stations will hit the mark. Well, maybe. Let's take a look at the description of Houston Station on the Texas Central's website. Near the interchange of US 290 and Interstate 610 in Northwest Houston. Okay, citing proximity to highway interchanges isn't promising, but they are aiming to connect the station to the region's growing bus rapid transit network, so that's something. And it's possible that the high-speed rail station will stimulate new, dense development in a suburban location. The site is an abandoned shopping mall, so this rail station is a definite upgrade. Let's head north to the Dallas Metroplex. The new station will be constructed in the Cedars neighborhood south of downtown Dallas. This is a neighborhood already served by light rail that connects to downtown. In fact, it connects the neighborhood to Dallas's Union Station, a beautiful building that already hosts Amtrak, light rail, streetcar, and bus. Texas Central says the station isn't big enough to accommodate high-speed rail, and existing freight uses make it impossible to use the station. It's a shame that high-speed rail couldn't use that historic downtown station, but if the connections between these two stations are good enough, maybe it won't make a difference. Both the Houston and Dallas stations are pragmatic if the goal is to get these lines built. They don't require extending high-speed rail tracks into the heart of either city, which can be costly. It remains to be seen how passengers will get to and from these stations, and if lively 24-7 districts will spring up around them. There's one last city and station to explore, San Antonio. The city has an existing Amtrak station nestled right on the edge of downtown. It's a rather uninspired building that handles the city's very limited passenger rail traffic. It's located right next to their beautiful historic train station worthy of something like high-speed rail. It's currently used as an event space, but it's not impossible to see it return to passenger service if Texas Central or a government agency were to purchase it. Though not located in the heart of downtown, it is in a historic district with room for future growth and development. It's also neighbors with the Alamo Dome Sports Arena, the Convention Center, and the Tower of the Americas. The Alamo Historic Site and San Antonio Riverwalk are within walking distance. There's just one problem. Interstate 37 cuts the station off from everything but the Alamo Dome, and even the Alamo Dome is separated by a concrete car canyon. A walk along Commerce Street isn't too bad, and I've definitely crossed under worse highways, but there would need to be some connectivity improvements to make this station area work. A Riverwalk expansion, new light rail service, or some sort of shuttle could help connect the station to nearby destinations. All of those destinations would be hugely popular with travelers. San Antonio Station is probably the best located to allow people to take a train, hop off, and reach some great attractions without needing a car. If we can agree that a successful train station is centrally located, within a 24-hour district, and has great transit access, then we can also agree that the stations in Texas's major cities are missing some key pieces. If I had to choose, I'd say San Antonio Station has the most possibility. But if Dallas's new station can be well-connected to the convention center and downtown generally, it could be a contender. A good high-speed rail system needs two things. A good rail network and great stations. Texas Central hopes to do both, and they're not alone. Longtime rival California has plans for its own high-speed rail system. And unlike Texas Central, they've already begun construction on segments of the track. But the plan has been mired in controversy and caused overruns. What's the latest on California's high-speed rail plans? I posted a quick synopsis of the successes and failures of that project over on Nebula. That content actually replaces this ad because there aren't any ads on Nebula. We're calling this bonus content Nebula Plus, and you'll see a lot of it over there, and not just from me. Lots of other creators are doing the same thing. It's proving quite popular, and I'll know you'll enjoy all of the Nebula Plus offerings on the platform. Nebula is great, and it's made even better thanks to our partnership with CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the source for high-quality, engaging documentaries. If you'd like to know more about railroads outside of Texas and California, you can watch On the Rails, a series that takes you on a tour of railroads all over the world. It's a great compliment to this video. And we have a deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link below, you'll get Nebula for free. That's not a free trial, but free as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. And they're running a special deal where you can get an entire year for 26% off. That's less than $15 a year for CuriosityStream and Nebula. Signing up is a great way of supporting this channel as well as the dozens of other great creators working to make Nebula a success. It's really an overall great deal too. So go click on the link in the description and get 26% off.